So now that we understood this property of air, we will be able to understand how wind currents are generated. So let us look at the earth as a whole because in order to understand why wind currents are generated we need to understand uh, uh, we need to have the basic knowledge of the geography because the location of different parts of the earth plays a very important role in this entire mechanism of wind currents generation so <clears throat> when you look at the entire earth so there are certain regions which we are going to talk about right now so this central line, which you see at the middle of the entire earth, this central line is called the equator. And these two extreme sides are called the poles, North Pole and South Pole, right? Now, when we talk about wind currents, we are actually going to talk about the movement of air. And this movement of air is controlled to a large extent by the sun. How by the sun? That's because different regions of the earth receive different amount of sunlight that's because of the shape of the earth so the earth is like a sphere approximately a sphere so obviously let's say if the sun is situated here let's say if the sun is here so the center part of the earth the regions near the equator might be receiving more light when compared to the poles so this part might receive more light when compared to the poles. Now, whichever part will receive more light, more sunlight, what will happen to that part? So those regions will receive more light. So they will receive, uh, they will get more heated up because the sunlight not only provides light, it also provides heat. So this region, the equatorial region, it receives more heat Therefore, the air which is present in this region, this air will get heated up. So basically, they, the air will expand when heated up. So they will be lighter and they tend to move up. So the air from here will tend to move in the upward direction, either towards this direction or towards this direction. So basically, it, it's a sphere, right? So I'm not saying that, that the lighter air will move down. It is basically moving up. Now, since the earth is also rotating and revolving, so basically the air is moving away from the equatorial regions and it is moving towards the poles. So this is what I am talking about the warm air. So basically what is happening, the warm air, so warm air is present at the equator. So from the equator, the warm air tend to move towards the poles that is the north pole and the south pole now what happens to the cold air now as this warm air moves towards the poles now in the poles it becomes like too much congested so it is something like somebody else coming to your house and taking your bed so what happens to you you need to find another bed for yourself correct so therefore what will the cold air do so then the cold air they start moving from the poles towards the equator so they start moving towards the equator because their positions have already been taken by the warm air so as a result what is happening because of these two processes what happens is known as the wind circulation where the warm air moves from the equator towards the poles and the cold air moves from the poles towards the equator so this is called a wind circulation now Looking at uh, this logic, we understand that these warm and cold air will be flowing in the north-south direction because this is like the north pole and this is the south pole. So either the uh, air will be moving from the equator towards the south pole or towards the north pole, but every time it should be in the vertical direction, that is the north-south direction. But when we actually look at the direction, we see that it is not exactly north or south direction. Instead, it is little tilted, as you can see here. It is like not exa neither exactly north nor exactly south, so somewhere in between. Why is it that? That is because the earth is not static. The earth is constantly rotating about its axis and it is also moving around the sun. Now, as it moves around the sun, then different parts of the sun, of the earth, receives different amount of sunlight. Now, by property of its rotation on its own axis, what happens is, now since the earth itself is moving like this, 
so the direction also gets influenced and therefore it is not exactly north south but slightly in between the two directions and this is how wind currents get generated so i hope this concept is clear because this is very very important the generation of wind currents and here which is that factor what do you think looking at this what do you conclude that what is that factor which led to the generation of wind current so the primary factor which was responsible was nothing but uneven heating of the earth that is the equator is more heated when compared to the poles and why did that happen because of the shape of the earth so the, since the earth is spherical in shape so the sun which is located somewhere here is able to provide more heat to the equator and less heat to the poles and due to this difference in heating the temperatures at these two places are different due to which the circulation of air takes place and that results in wind currents so uneven heating is the main cause behind generation of wind currents so now we will talk about certain special type of winds which uh, which tends to flow during day and night so the daytime with, with the breeze which blow is often termed as the sea breeze so the wind that blows from sea towards land that is given the name of sea breeze sea breeze would mean sea to land now we can experience these kind of uh, specific winds especially in the coastal areas because there we get to see the land and the sea next to each other so let's see what is the concept of sea breeze now <coughs> during the daytime what happens is the land gets heated up faster especially near the equator so in the equatorial regions land gets heated up faster so when i say land gets heated up faster that means what happens the air above the land is comparatively hotter when compared to the air which is above the sea right now this warm air now when the air gets heated up what happens to the air the air expands it becomes lighter and therefore it tends to move up so this warm air which is lighter tends to move up now when it moves up what happens here a vacuum is created some free space is created because the air here went up so therefore what happens is this cold air to from the sea comes towards the land and it occupies this space and then this entire cycle happens so the air which went up it took up the space of the already existing cold air there so that air again came here so this air came here and again the cold air came here so the same cold air got heated up in presence of during the daytime in presence of sunlight the warm air rises up again it moves towards the ocean again it flows towards here and the process continues so basically the warm air rises up so it takes up the space for the cold air and the cold air from the sea flows towards the land to take up the space which was emptied by the warm air so as a result what do you see as a result we see that a cool wind blows from the sea towards the land so this is sea and towards land so this breeze or this wind which blows from sea towards land during daytime is known as the sea breeze so here also you see the same concept of warm air takes place and this entire process of heat transfer is known as convection and we have learned about convection while we were um, discussing about the lesson on heat there we spoke about convection and we have also discussed about sea breeze and land breeze so just the reverse happens during night so at night time uh, it is the cold air which flows from the land towards the sea and that is why it is called land breeze so land breeze would mean land to sea now during night time the land will remain cold therefore the air which is present above the sea will be comparatively hotter so the warmer air will rise up and therefore the cold air from the land will move towards the ocean to take the space which was emptied by the warm air so as a result we will see that a cool breeze will blow from land towards sea 
during night time and this is called land breeze. So this is the concept of land breeze and sea breeze. Similarly, when you try to uh, see the direction in which wind blows during different seasons, so there also you will see the same concept. So let's talk about the monsoon wind. So what happens during monsoon? So monsoon or let's talk about summer rather so that, that you will be able to relate it more. So in summers, how are the days? So the, the days are very hot. So they are like hot, sunny, dry days. So that's how summers are. So in presence of uh, so much of heat, the land gets heated up faster. So the concept here is similar to the sea breeze concept which happens during the daytime because during summers it is very hot and under that heat the land gets heated up faster and therefore the hot air moves up and the cold air from the sea flows towards the land. So these winds which blow from the ocean towards the land so, so that's the direction of wind flow during summers. Now just after summers comes the monsoon when we have heavy rainfall. So basically these winds which come from the ocean towards the land, these winds carry water droplets with them because now the winds are coming from the ocean. Ocean is all about water. So these winds also carry some water droplets with them and that's how the winds bring rain. So monsoon winds bring rain and you know, uh, rainfall plays a very crucial role, especially in an agricultural country like India, where rainfall is needed for uh, irrigation. So therefore, people wait for rain, rainfall desperately. So rainfall happens immediately after the summer season. That's because during summer winds flow from the oceans towards the land and this wind carries water droplets with them. So basically these Monsoon winds bring rain and that is why these winds are called monsoon winds. So monsoon winds, they flow from the sea towards the land. So that's about the monsoon winds. Now exactly the reverse happens during winter. So in winters, the days are not that hot and sunny. So therefore the land remains cooler as compared to the oceans and therefore now you have the warm air just above the oceans. So these warm air being, warm air being lighter moves above and as a result the cold air flows from land to the ocean taking up the space which is emptied by the warm air here. So here you have air flowing from land towards ocean. So during winters the winds blow from land towards the sea. So that's, that's how the winter winds are. Now, as I was talking about the monsoon winds and the winter winds, I told you that monsoon winds bring rain and rain brings happiness to a lot of people, especially in a country like India where agriculture is very much important because a majority of our population depend on agriculture not only for their livelihood but agriculture provides food and food is required for the survival of all living organisms so without food we cannot survive and for production of food we need water and for water we need rainfall so therefore rainfall is very much necessary for agriculture for getting food which is important for the survival of living organisms but sometimes what happens is if there is too much of rainfall, now rainfall in the desired amount is needed because if there is no rainfall, it will adversely impact the agriculture. But what happens when there is too much of rainfall? So too much of rainfall again causes harm. So when there is too much of rainfall, it's what we call as flood. When there is so much of water everywhere that houses get damaged, properties get um, take, I mean, they flow away with the water, uh, animals die, human beings die. So there is huge loss of life including both plants and animals. So houses are broken, people become homeless, so many organisms lose their habitat. So huge loss, damage to buildings, roads, bridges. So all the transport system I mean, gets destroyed, the communication systems get destroyed, the telephone wires and all the cables, everything get messed up when there is too much of rainfall. 
waterborne diseases like cholera typhoid become very very common that's because now when there's there is so much of water everywhere what happens is all the water gets contaminated with different types of harmful substances so now those water they might kill animals and the dead bodies of the animals will remain in the water so basically the water is getting contaminated with harmful substances so therefore a lot of people but under such situations of flood people a lot of people do not have proper storage of drinking water so in that case people consume such polluted water and they get diseases like cholera and typhoid so it, it's very common that immediately after a flood now a lot of diseases come to that area like cholera and typhoid and again they also cause a huge loss of life